Hey guys, it's me Leo, and if you're new to my channel then welcome, and if you're returning, hi, good to see you again. Um, this is another one of my Halloween videos that I'm doing over the course of October for Halloween, um, where I'm doing a mix of true crime, um, a new series called Sick and Sick, which is like six countdowns of weird things. Um, I have a uh, video on the Amityville house coming up. Um, and I have a very special video just for Halloween coming. Um, but today is my first ever abduction case with my true crime videos. Like, I've never covered an abduction case on this channel before. Um, so I thought I would cover this. And this is the solved abduction of Shannon Matthews. start I would like to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no harm or disrespect in making this video or any videos that I make on these true crime cases. I do this out of education and purely out of interest in my own true crime um, interests that I've had since I was a child um, and these are purely all of my opinions and if your opinions differ that is completely fine but this is just for me to share something that I am truly interested in. And with that said, let's get into the case. Shannon Matthews was born on the 9th of September in 1998 and at the time of her disappearance she was nine years old and I do remember this case because we are around the same age. I am months older than her. Um, she was living in West Yorkshire in England and this case was huge. It was national news everywhere and Shannon was one of seven kids to Karen Matthews and I'm not sure who all the dads are, but I know there are five different dads to the seven kids and three of the seven kids weren't living with Karen at this time and I'm not going to judge her for that. But Karen and her family are what we would call here poverty porn and it's, I hate the term, it's disgusting, it's wrong, it's literally entertainment for upper class and middle class people to laugh at the working class and like the whole of the UK um, and like they have minimum wage jobs or they're like living off benefits and it's just for people to laugh at those in that situation and I would never judge anyone for living off benefits because that's kind of where I am right, right now like while looking for work I have to receive benefits and it is really hard to live off that kind of income I haven't got my own place yet, uh, where all my friends do, but I don't, and it, like, yeah, it's hard. But Karen also lives with her boyfriend at that time, Craig Meehan, and I think that's how you pronounce it, if not, I'm sorry. On the day of Shannon's disappearance, on the 19th of February in 2008, Shannon had just finished swimming lessons with the school and around, like, 9, 10 years old in England and Scotland, I don't know about, like, the rest of the UK. Um, around that age you get free swimming lessons because I done it um, I, I know now that it's an, a thing in England as well but yeah that's just a thing it's free swimming lessons at 9 10 years old it's great but anyway Shannon was coming out of the swimming pool and she was captured leaving on CCTV which would become a huge thing in this case and I will show you the CCTV now She was about half a mile from her home when she went missing, when she came off the bus um, and got dropped off at the school. And when she didn't come home right away, Karen wasn't too bothered. Um, she thought she was maybe with a friend and Karen didn't know that Shannon hadn't came home until like later on. Um, schools down in England finish earlier than they do here, so like at 9, 10 years old I was finishing school at quarter past three, but I think down there they finish at like half two in the afternoon, lucky. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, Karen was actually out with her boyfriend's sister and Karen came home and asked Craig, you know, where's Shannon? And he was like, oh, she hasn't came home yet. Um, they thought maybe she was like at a friend's house or she went out with friends to go play somewhere and maybe just kind of forgot to tell Craig or her mum where she went but when she didn't come home even later 
Karen then reported her missing at 6.48pm. Police emergency. Hiya, I want to put my daughter is missing, please. Right, how old is she? Nine. Nine? Yeah. When did you last see her? She went to school this morning. Right, have there been any arguments or anything? No, like not that? at all. No. Have, have you been in touch with any of her friends or anybody like I've been that? everywhere I can think of her right. friends, wives and family and everything. And nobody at all? No. Any information or where she can be? No. Does she go to school and come back on her own? normally then. Yes. Right. So you were expecting her home off at four o'clock back. About half a seat later she's come right. back from school to me to work three. Does she have a mobile phone or anything like that? No, it's at home. Just right, so she, there's no way of actually ringing to find yeah. out. But you've run round all the friends yeah. and you've been in touch with all the relatives yeah. and there's nowhere else that you've got left to look. No. Have you been in touch with the school or uh, have they can they confirm whether she went to a normal time at ten past three? Right. Right. What the caller? Shannon Matthews. Has she been missing before? No, third time. And there's been nothing to, to, to intimate why she should go? No, no. By this point in February, it would have been dark, um, like it is in the winter time here. Um, and it would have been absolutely freezing because, our, like, it's freezing here, I can't, like, it will be freezing down in England as well. Within minutes of the call being made, the police were there and then immediate family were called and within minutes again, all the immediate family were in the house, so there were hundreds of people in the house. And they all went out and done a manual search, which is like where they check in fields and bushes, like parks, you know, all these other places, just a manual kind of comb over search. And when news hit the whole estate, everyone in the area started searching for Shannon Matthews. Everybody turned up, people that you don't normally see. You know that they live on the estate, but you've never spoke to them. It, everybody was there, just trying to do their bit. By now, it was looking like a kidnapping instead of a runaway. Um, I don't know what made them roll out run away so quickly, but they they rolled out very quickly. The family had family liaison officers who were sent to keep the family kind of calm, help them cope, kind of see if they could get answers out of them um, and help them find Shannon. And while that was going on, police were searching the house and in Shannon's bedroom on the top of the bunk bed where, she was where Shannon slept, they found the words I want to live with my dad and I think it was on the wall or on the ceiling so this kind of did add to the runaway theory like maybe she ran away to be with her biological dad but like I said at this point they put the runaway theory aside but this could have led to a runaway case with I want to live with my dad and news of the case hit local news to appeal to the public and while this was going on the liaison officers noticed that Karen's behaviour was unusual for a concerned mother. So Shannon's face on the screen said, here's Shannon, she's famous. I remember thinking, no, she's not famous, she's, she's missing. Within the, the first certainly five, ten minutes, my phone rang and I've got one of these dodgy tunes on it and Karen got up and started, oh, I love this tune. And, she, and sat, she started dancing, dancing, didn't she, just in front of the telly. And I remember thinking, this is the first time I've met you and... There's something just not quite right here. And I suppose one of the first things that hit me was the fact that Craig is on his Xbox concentrating on playing a, a game and, and Karen's just sat beside him and they seem to be side by side, whatever they did. So as you can see from those clips, this wasn't like looking like a concerned, worried mother. She was dancing to ringtones and at, at one point jumped out on one of the other family liaison officers as a joke, and I'll show you a clip of him talking about that. And the house was empty. And then uh, the next thing I heard was uh, was someone shouting boo. And uh, and then it was Karen, she'd been hiding behind the living room door, leapt out and uh, and tickled me on, on my sides. And uh, and now uh, I was absolutely flabbergasted by that. I mean, what, what do you make of that? Then after 48 hours of Shannon being missing, 
Karen made a public appeal, which she was advised against. This was, you know, in case someone did abduct and kidnap Shannon and saw how widespread this whole case became, like, was and decided, you know what, this isn't worth it and done something even worse to Shannon. Seventeen days later, the police are still struggling to establish exactly what happened to Shannon that evening. Did she run away? Was she abducted? Are they now looking for a body? At Shannon's two up two down on the Moorside estate, her mother Karen and stepfather Craig have found that the national news editors have quickly lost interest. A recent appeal only made it to page 17 of The Sun. And if she was still alive, and chances of that look quite slim at this point, in cases involving missing children, um, they say statistically that after 24 hours, the chances of the child being found alive are halved, and after 48 hours, halved again. So you can imagine you know, children that go missing for a very, very long time, presumed dead. And Karen didn't seem to think like that either, like... And I suppose this can be looked at as her keeping a positive mindset, but people said she could just turn on the tears like that and then come back from the cameras and go right back to the laughing and dancing to round tones and smiling. Looked when there were no cameras around. She saw the cameras walking down and she was jumping up and down and laughing in community house. But I just put that down to nerves. Karen just didn't quite seem concerned enough when she... And I get it, stressful situations can make people act very out of character and very strange. But this made Karen look suspicious. And one thing in this case that does disgust me is the way the media hounded the Matthews. They would follow them down the street. The, there was at one point in a documentary where the photographers for a newspaper were like running after Karen and Craig while they were trying to visit a friend. I'm not talking to her. We're talking to the doctor. Just around the corner, neighbours Salim and Farah are running a campaign from the community centre. Its main aim is to find the money to pay for leaflets, posters and t-shirts. If you've got any leaflet tickets, I could take some to work with me on Monday night. Yeah, I've got some, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give... some? Because I've got, like, family who'll come to see them, so I've not... Well, what I'll do, I'll give you about £15 off then, and then you can, yeah. Did you tell me how much you... Is They're a pound a first trip. trip. Right. Then I can go around my work as well as... Yeah, yeah. ...in the you. You know what I've started doing? It's putting me two pences in a jar. Yeah, and every little whatever, else, doesn't it? Whatever that's in that jar is going to this Shannon appeal. What I usually do with foul skin, I just, like, go into... Yeah, mind. yeah. I'm not now. I know it's going to hurt me. Yeah. Father Richard Branson made, for instance, in the fair had all that money. I'd just be down sending you a check for... Yeah, whatever. but no, they've do, he's done that for the McClans. They've got quite no, a I'm lot just of saying famous Vicky, ones. I'm just saying, yeah. if I was Richard Branson... No, what Vicky's yeah. saying is she's got more attention than what... Oh, yeah. 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 She's got a lot more than what Shannon has, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. You haven't got people phoning you up saying, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do you a check for so-and-so, so-and-so, yeah. whereas... The McCann's have. have. Yeah, that's uh, the so Guardian like. in there all the times. It's one of those posh ones, isn't it? Because they're trying to compare this to the McCann's. Well, we this is completely that. different. And that's what we said. Well, that's what because we said. It's not that they've said. got the money to do it, and we've just a late small community council. That's what we said. That's what we said. You know, it's McCann's, so right? They went out for a meal. Yes, I So why, do, why did they leave? Why did they leave? That little kid on the road, my label. Stuff in the faces with food. Yeah. Sorry about that. But it's annoying when you saw when you saw that the times comparing. Why are you complaining? Yeah. And then there's still two cases gone missing. missing. One's gone that's missing in the said. Broad, that's what and we've, one that's what we've that's said. That's what we've said. Yeah, we've said it all along. Yeah, fair enough. Shannon's older, but there's still kids. Yeah. Should be somewhere else. 
<laughs> She'd be in the house somewhere. Like, that's what I'm... Tell you what, there'll be a lot of tears, lass. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, but... If she come back now, there'll be... Mum, no, 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 no. I won't, though. Nah. Over the past few days for Karen and Craig, the same... So they were being hounded constantly by the media, um, and the, the papers would say things like, children meant benefits to Karen, like they would suggest that Karen didn't care about her kids. And one paper said that Karen lacks eloquence, neither she or her daughter are photogenic. So a lot of papers compared this to the Madeleine McCann case, and that was a big case at the time as well. And a lot of these tabloids papers would say things like, Madeleine McCann is blonde and blue eyed and she's really cute and her parents are well respected doctors. And then turn around and be like, and they're Shannon Matthews. Shannon Matthews has been missing for nearly three weeks and apart from her neighbours, no one seems to give a toss. Not right profile, you see, not a right class. Karen Matthews has seven kids by five different fathers. She lives in a scruffy council house and an improvished council estate near Leeds. Her boyfriend, who is ten years younger than her, looks both simple and scruffy. The problem is that Shannon Matthews isn't as pretty as Maddie McCann. She's not blonde or cute or beautiful. You don't look at her and want to cry. And it is just so disgusting. Like. It, it just riles me so much. An award amount had been reached eventually and uh, this was through different kind of donations and funnily enough one of the tabloid papers, The Sun, um, gave in a donation even though they were slagging off uh, Shannon Matthews and her mum and her family and you know writing things about her mum's boyfriend and hounding them and yeah that's a surprise um, but they ended up adding the total up to £50,000 for the safe return of Shannon Matthews. After 24 days of Shannon Matthews being missing, she was finally found alive. Surprisingly. At 12.30 on the 14th of March in 2008, this was completely shocking to everyone in the UK. There were news teams everywhere in the estate again, and this time it was celebrating this happy occasion that the nine-year-old that was missing for 24 days was found alive which no one thought would happen and Karen didn't seem too happy about this one of her friends had to go tell her from her door to smile and look happy for the cameras we were watching it on the telly and we're giving it god she ain't smiling she ain't smiling so we just opened the front door slightly and shouted for god's sake Karen, smile <laughs> The nine-year-old had been found in a man's home, hidden in the base of a divan bed. I became aware of movement within the bed, and as I went across to the far side of the bed, Shannon's head appeared on that side and reached over, picked Shannon up, and carried her out. I, I couldn't believe that I'd found her. And then I heard Shannon's voice from within this bedroom. I clearly heard her say, stop it. You're frightening me now. The man in question was Michael Donovan, who was 39 years old at the time of his arrest, and he was actually Craig Meehan's uncle. The uncle, um, so this was Karen's boyfriend's uncle, who had been hiding Shannon Matthews, his nephew's stepdaughter, in his own flat for 24 days. This added to suspicion, of course, because this was someone Karen knew, and Karen had been hinted at this before at one of the press conferences. Thinks that somebody out there will oh know Shannon. Was supposed to probably know me as well, and it's just I just want to know I'm safe, really. Karen eventually did confess to a family liaison officer and two friends in her neighbourhood that this had been planned. Well, basically, me and Natalie were sat talking on the Saturday night and Natalie went, do you know, I'd love to be able to speak to Karen. So I went, well, I'll see if I can arrange it if you want. So we met her at six o'clock down in Batley 
Karen is driven to the rendezvous by a police liaison officer, Christine Freeman. Then the two women got into the back of uh, Christine and Karen's car and Natalie said um, that the rumours had been going around the estate and asked her quite bluntly, were you involved, saying to her she believed that, uh, that Karen had known where Shannon was all along and, and Karen replied, yes, it's true. The plan was that Michael Donovan would keep Shannon as flat until Karen gave him the signal to go ahead and Michael was to drive around, drop Shannon off somewhere in a busy street. That Michael was then to find Shannon, collect the reward money and split it with Karen. And like I said, Karen confessed this to her friend in a family liaison officer's car. And I showed you the clip of that. In November of 2008, the trial for the abduction of Shannon Matthews began and in court evidence was given through a hair sample that Shannon had been drugged for the entirety of her abduction. And I did not know that hair samples could give a lot of evidence. Apparently they can tell a lot from just a hair sample, which is really, really interesting. I've never heard of that before. But yeah, hair samples can tell you a lot, apparently. Michael Donovan had told the court of Karen's plan for the money. Karen apparently threatened Michael Donovan with violence if he didn't comply to Karen's plans. On the 27th of November, Karen Matthews was asked to give evidence to the court. She was sobbing the whole entire time she gave her side of the events. She claimed that it was her boyfriend, Craig Meehan, that had told her to take the blame for what his uncle done um, and she said that she was scared of Craig and all of this, it was just a whole lot of pointing the fingers at each other and after cross-examination of Karen's events, police said that she told a total of five different versions of this whole story. On the 4th of December in 2008, Karen Matthews and Michael Donovan were both found guilty of kidnapping, false imprisonment and perverting the course of justice. And in January 2009, both received eight years in prison. Karen and Michael have both been released since then after serving only half of their sentence, which is awful. And another side note, the year, like in 2009, Craig Meehan was arrested and found guilty of indecent images of children on his laptops. Um, his technology was seized by police and I don't know what reason, I don't know if someone has reported him or what not, but yeah, he got caught with um, CP and was put in jail for that. And as for Shannon Matthews, she was given a whole new identity and placed with a foster family. Uh, her siblings were, you know, went, her siblings went to live with their fathers and I honestly hope that wherever Shannon is now that she is okay and is living her best life and has mentally recovered from all of this. So that was it for the Shannon Matthews case. Um, it's kind of a short one. There's not an awful lot of information, like I've seen videos longer than this one, but I, I don't know where they found all this and I'm just, you know, putting what I find out there. But yeah, I hope you found this as interesting as I did. I cannot believe the whirlwind, the whirlwind of everything that happened during this whole entire case. Like watching the documentaries and things was a constant whiplash moment like I was getting whiplash the whole time watching these documentaries it was wow but yeah I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll see you guys next time see you later